or is it not? Is the police speaking? Hello. Hello. Hey. Um. Sorry, I just got an inquiry here. Um. About credit card. Um. I'm trying to. I've got an email here with a credit card inquiry. Uh, to pay with credit card essentially, and and I believe th- it looks a little bit dodgy, and I think maybe the credit card is stolen. Credit card, yours or someone else? No, someone's trying to pay for a service that will provide. Um, and based on the scenario, it just seems like the credit card must be a stolen credit card. Um, Why is that? Because they, um, the name doesn't match uh, their email, and then they're also saying that um, so they've given me like two different credit card details because um, I wasn't ready to pr- process the first payment at the time. And then I, I delayed it by like a couple of hours or three hours. And then I told him, okay, I'm ready to go now. And he gave me a different credit card number, but it's like similar. So, and he's asking me, you know, to, t- to charge a little bit more. It just looks a little bit dodgy. So how can I know if the credit card is like stolen or not? Um, and then, yeah, just to see if it's genuine or not. So the reason you don't think that it's genuine is because the name doesn't match the card. That's one. The other thing is um, he's when, when I was going to process the credit card payment, he said mm-hmm. this is his credit card number and details, and then I was actually out and I wasn't able to do it. So I told him, hey, I can't do it right now. I'll be able to run it in three hours. And then he said, okay, no worries. Let me know. I'll send you details again. And he sent me a yeah. different credit card number details. That um, doesn't mean that it's stolen, though. Yeah, it doesn't, but um, it just looks a little bit too similar the numbers they look pretty similar and then also he's asking me to charge more so he's like basically my you know if my charge is 600 he's asking me to um to you know he's like oh i'm happy to pay 100 dollars extra for for tip you know that doesn't happen normally so what's the service that you provide that he's trying D- to buy dj services right yeah and is this just through email or through email yeah um, is there? I've got a credit card number details here. Is there a way we can check that to see if like someone's reported uh, that stolen not or not? Really? I, maybe if you give me a name, I can look that up. But still, that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's going to show anything. Mm. You want to give me the name? I've got the name. Yeah. So uh, Linda Smith. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a made up name to me. But how do I spell? Is it L I N D A? Yeah. Smith was it? Smith. Yep. Do you have any other details like your address, date of birth? Because there's going to be a lot of windowsmiths over yeah. the Yeah, no, I've just got credit card details and that's about it. All right. Uh, look, just because they've given you different details doesn't mean that it's stolen. It can't really prove that unless someone has previously reported it. Yeah, so um, would, would, you you be able to ch- would you be able to check to see if someone's reported it? Because I can give you that number. I can't look up through the number. I don't have, I'm not able to do that. Okay. So if you don't trust, that's up to you, I guess, yeah. whether you trust them or not. Right. All right. So if it, what, if it does go through, um, yeah. if you do choose to do it and it is stolen, the victim, so that wouldn't be you, the victim would be the person whose card is stolen. They, they're able to call police and report it and right. we can deal with it through, through that. So if they if if it's stolen and then they report it and they get the money back essentially and then uh, yeah. does that come out of my like do I have to pay back the money or no so that, it wouldn't be your fault obviously you, didn't, yeah. you wouldn't have known okay. um, but at the end of the day it's up to you whether you trust them or not but we can't really prove that it's a stolen card just just because they've given different information. Yeah, no, it's it's just like a little bit because it's not just that. So there's a few different things. Um, it's yeah. that you know two different card numbers, blah blah. blah. He's asking me to. Um, he's saying that he's gonna give me extra, like uh, two, I think it's two thousand. He was saying or one thousand something. Uh, he's gonna mm-hmm. give me extra money to for his for his um, uh, event planner and and he wants me to transfer the, the money to them, all that stuff. So it just looks a little bit not normal. And where are they from? It doesn't say in Sydney somewhere. Yeah. 
they want a DJ service in the city. Yeah, okay. Uh, look, that's what, if that's what we can go off it. If I don't really have more information than that, I can't really okay. look it up on our system. No, we don't fair have enough. access to all that all good. stuff. So. All good, no worries. Uh, all right, I'll, no I think worries. I'll, just, I'll just pass on this one. <laughs> Thanks anyway. All right, no worries. See you Thank later. You. Thank you, bye. Bye. Now, anyone with a little bit of a brain would actually know that this is a scam. You know, it's fully obvious because what kind of event planning venue doesn't take credit card, right? That's first thing. Secondly, if they don't tra take credit card, why would you spend like $2,000 for a stupid birthday in midday, right? The other thing is, why would you come out and just randomly say, hey, I'll give you a $100 tip? Like, I mean, you see my job and if I'm amazing, then yeah, I am, I normally get tips. But in general, you know, you don't give a tip up front. That's just weird, right? Then in the first email, he asks, do you take credit card? I'm like, well, just, just wait. Of course, you can ask me that the second email, like, you know, don't be so obvious. God damn, making it so hard. Oh, then he's asking me to run the, the actual, um, run the transaction in two separate ones, you know, one 1500, then the remaining. So obviously some dodgy going on there too. A lot of dodgy things, lots, lots of red flags here. It's a, it's actually a scam that is on the website and, you know, explained that, yep, it's, this is how they operate. Don't fall for it. And it says, call your bank. Now it's funny because when I call the bank, they don't really help. Um, and I call the police, they don't really care either. The police was actually like, how do you know it's a scam? I'm like, uh, it's obvious. Anyway, it's not their fault. Um, you know, it's just very easy to be a police. So yeah, all good. Um, so look, I just wanted to make this video, raise awareness around the scams. Um, don't fall for it. If anything that sounds a little bit dodgy, a little bit different, a little bit weird, do a quick Google search to see if it's uh, other people experienced it. Um, and maybe just run it by some other people, like run it by three or four people and see what they say. Don't just, um, you know, go ahead and do it. It's, it can be tempting because, you know, if you're making, you know, if you're a small business and, you know, $600 is $600 for your, you know, your gigs, that's extra booking that you didn't have. But um, you don't want to get involved with these. The credit card holder gets their money back. The scammer gets their money and you lose money. So um, not not a good outcome for you at all. That's it for me. If you enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next week for the next video. And as always, stay real. Peace.